you clicked on this video, you probably know what Synology or Synology, however, I guess Synology, I've just always said it. I've played with some of these before, but that's not what this video is about. But I guess a little background, if you don't know what this box is, it's just a pre-built hardware NAS network attached storage. And it's kind of like a little computer and it's got this particular model, and they make several different ones, is it, it just has little hard drive caddies inside, if I can pop one out. They even have their own like branded hard drives now, the Synology hard drives there. They did give this to me on loan to check out their new little cameras in the their whole little ecosystem of things. Um, I got nothing really crazy to say. I mean, you do get what you pay for in the Synology NAS. I mean, I was, they got a lot of cool little different apps and way to back up things. Um, I don't think I've heard of any crazy breaches on their stuff. I don't even think you need to put this in the cloud unless you want to. So pretty cool. I have enjoyed those for home networking. Now, I personally run Unraid, but that's a whole different video deal. But this is going to be about the whole camera. Um, I don't know. Let's just see before I totally make my whole intro of what I think I don't like about this particular camera. So I hope you enjoyed some of the clips. So I guess let's dive into the actual interface of this thing. I mean, this should be an awesome camera, right? So this is the actual web interface. So yeah, it does have the RTSP, but that's where things just, you know, the whole wheels fall off because they want you to use this with their, you know, NVR system. So Right here, it does tell you to adjust the image in stream settings, you need to go to surveillance station. That is their software on their box. So if you're trying to use this with Frigate or you're going to be using it with Blue Iris, whatever, just stop right here, go get a different camera and you can hit the thanks and do whatever down with the video. Now, if you want to continue on, hey, by all means. One thing I did find, I could not get this damn camera to add to the NVR and it kept saying there was a bad password. In the network security settings, I had to go turn off the security stuff about it blocking the auto block stuff. I don't know why it kept doing that, but I just hit allow all and finally it went in. I guess I could turn this back on once I added it into surveillance station. There's not a whole lot here inside the camera GUI because you're just not gonna find that here. You're gonna get a few different things but that's about it. You can restart deal and everything. Uh, edge recording. I think that's, oh, that's the um, SD card, I believe. I didn't use an SD card in it. Um, you do get the one thing here. Like I mentioned, the RTSP is, there's the RTSP link and you can test that inside of VLC. It does work and everything is hunky-dory, but you want to adjust any of the image stuff? Mm-mm. You can't, you need their NVR. So off into their NVR is the surveillance station. This is it. 
I don't claim to be an expert on this at all. I did try to add some Daiwa cameras to it. It kept jacking up the FPS and the, the resolution on the substreams. I'm not sure exactly why I was trying to use just the regular quality. Maybe there's some settings that I am missing there, but I didn't really want to make this just for the actual turret that I am using. Now, once you get in here, of course, adding this into the actual you know surveillance station i do have this kind of zoomed in a little bit for the video so let's see if we can make it fit sorry for it being a little small but apparently this needs to be a set size so sorry mobile users but once you do get in here in the surveillance station you do get all that stuff you can change the audio formats and you can change the image i left everything default exposure everything but yeah, you'll see in some of the clips, it's very saturated. And I don't know if that's just, I, I had the, the saturation set on default. Maybe we should scale that back. I, just, I did leave everything, like I say, at default. But all your typical stuff that you would normally see and do in a normal camera GUI, they did take it out and it's in surveillance station itself. I guess that leads to, I believe I was reading that since, you know, these cameras are Synology cameras, well, that's not going to use up your licenses that you have. I don't know the whole licensing mod model or whatever they want to call it. Um, I guess that's here. I guess, see, look, I'm still showing that I have two available licenses and I'm using zero probably because I'm using their camera so i guess there is that plus you don't have to buy that additional license if you are using their camera now of course in surveillance station you'll get you know if you wanted the live views and the replays and everything the software did look nice i will give them that but i just wasn't a big fan of the camera and you'll see why if i jump over to the recordings which in some of the clips i did show if you notice there's a ring here and a ring here. It's kind of subtle. It's hard to see it sometimes, but I noticed it right off the bat, especially in a dark, different view. Let's see if I can find one here. Especially you could see it on the driveway where, which is oddly enough, I test some of my color night vision cameras because there's more lighting out here, but you know, there's not much IR out here and it looks foggy it's not foggy there's nothing on it's not foggy at all out here uh, there's nothing on the lens i cleaned these cameras and but you can see there's a ring here well i just switched to i was playing around with this trying to check out night mode in the dark let me switch it back but you'll see that same ring here and that ring here and then you'll get the ir hot spot in the middle not as bad as like the real link 810a's has that hot spot but still kind of that hot spot not a great camera for night at all daytime yeah, it's okay here's the example i was looking for you'll take note you'll see those same rings as i go to grab for the camera right here and that's just due to something weird with the lens. I'm not sure, but it's not going to see it all environments, but some you're going to see it. So you'll see those same little rings here. If you take a moment, I'll try to pause it. You see those rings right here? That's the same rings I was seeing in the backyard. And then also when the IR wasn't there. Now I know this isn't normal. You can always you know, have a hand right in front of the camera. But just wanted to show you that it is something actually in the hardware, which is very weird for a camera this price. Now you'll see what I'm talking about. The saturation is just absolutely insane. It's blown out, very colorful. I mean, some people may like that level of saturation. I really didn't like it. They need to kind of tone that back. I believe I did play around with some of the color settings on there and being, it was still just wasn't you know, that great compared to some of the other cameras that I've played with. So the camera itself, small little turret style, nothing, no frills to it. This is power over ethernet. But they do have, you know, your standard little barrel jack for doing, you know, 12 volt DC if you want. Plus, they got the cool little cap. The mount, I always don't, real link change there is this stupid looking plastic mount. 
and I didn't like the way it didn't lock. So, does theirs lock too or no? So the plate comes off. So I don't think this locks. There's just tabs. You see there's just tabs in here that hold pressure. You can see that little gap right there. There's just plastic tabs that are just bent in to hold the pressure on the little ball that's in here. And there's a little SD card slot, but it, yeah, it moves too easy. I mean, I barely touch it and it moves like crazy. I don't like that. that one moment. So this is a Amcrest camera. And generally these are like half the price of this one here. These are all like metal body ones. And the cool thing they have is this right here. And real link still can't get that right on their even price cameras either. But it's just a simple thing. It's a set screw that whenever you get the camera in the exact spot that you want it, you tighten it up with the little Torx wrench and it doesn't really move. You'd really have to force it to move. You can see I kind of, I'm pushing hard on it, but no amount of weather or accidentally bumping that is going to really move that camera. I'm sad that that Synology didn't include a set screw on their camera for the price point. So, so in closing, um, yeah, I didn't like it. I don't really like the surveillance station software. Uh, maybe there's some settings in there I did not find, but the surveillance software, even I was trying to bring in some of my Daiwa Amcrest cameras, it kept changing the frame rates to like, it would put them down to like 320 resolution and one frames per second on the substream. It drove me nuts because I use those cameras and other software. But with this camera, it did work pretty decent. And once I did find that setting where it kept, you know, blocking the IP address for this camera, but yeah, the whole mount sucks. For this being like over a $200 camera, this mount is absolutely garbage. I'll just say Synology needs to go back to the drawing board. They need a metal case with a set screw if they're gonna charge this kind of price for the camera. And then the whole IR issue that I showed with the ring of things, um, that's garbage as well. I don't know if the other model, the bullet, if it has the same IR issues, um, yeah, then you need to fix that. Then the oversaturation issues during the day, then you gotta really use it with Synology. I know that the people like to lock you into things, but then you're just limiting your whole sales. It's kind of, I guess, a decision that they made that you have to do all the settings in Synology itself. I didn't really like it. I just used it with Blue Iris and let it go. But um, yeah. I do appreciate Synology for sending this to check out. Sorry guys, uh, it's gonna be a nope for me. You know, that's, cause I'm using a bunch of other different stuff from NVRs to Blue Iris to Frigate and a bunch of different cameras. And that way we can use a bunch of stuff. I hate to see where stuff gets being locked down. It's just not me. So we're off to go shift this back to Synology and uh, let them have their hardware, maybe send it off to somebody else. So I do appreciate you watching this one. And uh, yep, y'all know all the drill. Press all them buttons down there and y'all take care.